The legendary B-52 Stratofortress, a cornerstone of American air power since the 1950s, is undergoing a remarkable transformation. This enduring icon of American might is set to fly well into the 2050s, thanks to a series of cutting-edge upgrades that are pushing the boundaries of what this venerable airframe can achieve. Emerging technologies are at the heart of this overhaul, ensuring the B-52 remains a formidable force in the skies. One of the most significant updates is the integration of modern radar systems, which will increase situational awareness and target acquisition capabilities. These advanced radars are designed to be more efficient and require less maintenance, reducing downtime and operational costs. The B-52 is a very old aircraft. It was introduced in 1952, and to keep it operational for this long, serious modernization efforts had to be taken from time to time. The B-52 has been a nuclear-capable aircraft since the beginning of the nuclear age, yet more recent innovations will significantly improve its nuclear capacity. The aircraft will travel with the now-in-development long-range standoff weapon, a nuclear-capable, dual-use cruise missile in development for the future. The aircraft is not only a display of technological innovation, but also a potent diplomatic tool. Its ability to project power across vast distances supports U.S. strategic objectives, influencing both allies and potential adversaries. Countries like Russia and China, investing heavily in hypersonic weaponry and stealth aircraft, may shift strategies in response to the B-52's continued presence. Additionally, the B-52 is being fitted with new Rolls-Royce F-130 engines, which promise to improve fuel efficiency and reliability. This engine upgrade is expected to significantly extend the range of the aircraft, allowing it to fly longer missions without refueling. The new engines that will be part of a massive upgrade of the B-52 Stratofortress bomber have passed their critical design review and are set to begin final development, production, and more intensive testing. The massive beast in the sky is currently powered by eight Pratt & Whitney engines that have served its needs pretty well all this time. But the U.S. Air Force, USAF, plans to keep the Stratofortress in the skies for at least three more decades, effectively making the B-52 the first and only aircraft to still be operational 100 years after it was originally made, and that requires brand new hardware. The Stratofortress modernization is central to the Air Force's plans to reshape its bomber fleet to prepare for a potential war against a major adversary. As the Air Force brings on its newest bomber, the Stealth B-21 Raider, it plans to retire its aging and worn-out B-1 Lancer and B-2 Spirit fleets. Sometime in the 2030s, the Air Force expects to have a two-bomber fleet consisting of at least 100 B-21s and 76 upgraded B-52Js. These upgrades ensure the B-52 Stratofortress remains a linchpin of strategic air power well into the future, adapting to new defense technologies and tactics while maintaining its iconic presence in the U.S. Air Force arsenal. As the aircraft evolves, its legacy as a symbol of endurance and strength is set to continue for decades to come. Today's B-52 can fire nuclear weapons, long-range cruise missiles, precision-guided bombs, and function as an air-mobile bomb-truck arsenal plane of sorts. The largest and potentially most impactful innovation of great consequence to the B-52 may be its growing ability to focus as a drone-launching mothership, meaning a platform able to launch and recover drones from the air. The B-52Hs, which joined the Air Force's fleet in the early 1960s, are still flying with their original TF-33 engines. Those 60-year-old TF-33s are now at the end of their working lives and finding new and creative ways of breaking, as one Air Force Global Strike Command officer said earlier this year. Maintainers are hard-pressed to keep B-52s flying. As spare parts grow scarcer and airmen regularly are increasingly forced to cannibalize other engines to keep operational planes working. For their use on this military plane, however, some changes were required, including fitting two of these engines in a dual pod configuration, just like the power plants currently in use. And that naturally translated into two long years of testing performed at various locations across the U.S., including in Indianapolis and at the NASA Stennis Space Center. 
The Gulfstream G650 business jet now flies with a version of the F-130 engine. However, the twin pod, underwing configuration planned for the B-52, will be a different mount for those engines, so the Air Force needed to verify they would operate as planned that way. The company will move into the next stage in February 2025, when it will begin altitude testing at the USAF Arnold Engineering Development Complex in Tullahoma, Tennessee. If the all-clear is given, production lines will start rolling at the largest Rolls-Royce facility in America, in Indianapolis. Sadly, by the time this story was written, no details were provided on when we are to expect the new engines to be fitted on the bomber's wings. The overall performance of the B-52, or the B-52J, as the version getting these engines will be called, will not change as a result of the engine swap. We were not provided with the specifics of the new engine setup, but we expect pretty much the same performance levels as in the H variant, a top speed of 650 miles per hour, over 1,000 kilometers per hour, and a payload lifting capacity of around 70,000 pounds, 31.5 tons, backed by thrust levels sitting at roughly 17,000 pounds per engine. But making the B-52 new again is only one step in the process. The Air Force is also trying to map out how best to use it in a war against advanced forces that could deny airspace to the U.S. and allies. Such a conflict would represent a dramatic shift away from the relatively open airspaces in which B-52s have operated for the last two decades. And the modernization on the way is vital to keeping the B-52 able to engage the enemy, Armagost said. That will mean figuring out the best way for the B-52J to work alongside the B-21 now in development. The B-21 Raider, with its next-generation stealth capabilities, was designed to conduct penetrating strike missions against an adversary with advanced air defenses, such as China, while the B-52J, about as stealthless as can be, would carry out standoff strikes, launching missiles at enemy targets from outside contested airspace. During the Gulf War, for example, B-52s flew 1,741 missions and dropped 27,000 tons of munitions, including conventional air-launched cruise missiles and conventional bombs. They targeted airfields, aircraft, command and control sites, power facilities, and Republican Guard positions, while allowing Allied ground forces to sweep through and swiftly win the war. And in a single night mission in the opening phase of the Iraq War, B-52s launched 100 cruise missiles at targets before going on to fly at least 100 additional missions in the conflict's first few weeks. Such a campaign would allow a 100-hour ground war because of what's been conducted through an air operation, Armagost said. Then the resulting joint environment becomes completely different than what it was prior to that. The Air Force is drawing up robust concepts of operations for how the B-21 will carry out missions, he added, including alongside the B-52, which is also helping Air Force Global Strike Command identify potential future capability gaps and how to address them. If the B-52 modernization ends up significantly more complicated than expected and thus delayed, Penny explained, the Air Force may be forced to extend the life of some B-1s or B-2s beyond their planned early retirements in the 2030s just to keep enough operational bombers. If you enjoy content like this, please go ahead and like and subscribe to this video because I appreciate all your support.